Ahoy hoy TYT Nation, members of the brand show, I am Mr. TYT Gaming, and as the director of TYT Gaming, I felt the need to respond to a recent episode of The Point. Let me start by saying I'm a fan of The Point, and I think the panel discussions are great. Having said that, I actually have a problem with a recent episode when it came to gaming. This, of course, isn't a personal attack on anyone. I'm going to throw a link in the description so you can watch the episode for yourself and get uh, the full context. But here are specific portions of the episode I disagree with. I want to talk about video games and the way that video games have possibly desensitized us uh, to what the military does and, and you know whether they are an instrument in, in making military action even more distant to the average American. Before I get into the substance and content, one of the initial problems is the makeup of the panel. While of course these are veterans, they're also outside the target demographic for military advertising. Here's a video of a commercial ran by the U.S. Army using video games. Look at the demographic. You look like you're really into this. You guys want a real challenge? As a soldier in the United States Army, you'll find out what you're really made of and how far you can go. Explore over 150 careers, help pay for college, and learn if you qualify for an enlistment bonus. Call 1-888-395-ARMY now for a free copy of the America's Army game and this new interactive DVD. Hear what it's like to be a soldier from real soldiers. You ready to take this to the next level? Call now to find out how you too can become Army strong. From that commercial you just saw, it's hard not to notice that Earmarks start to finish, it's filled with 18 to 25 year olds. In other words, this panel isn't the target demographic. I say this because there's a disconnect between the panelists and myself. I myself am between 18 to 35. I've heard this argument before that insert medium causes insert stereotype. So this time it's video games that are on this hot seat. Remember when swing music was blamed for the troubled youth? Rock and roll? If we were supposed to follow the same strand of logic, does Saving Private Ryan's ultra-realism in the opening scene make you inclined to join the army? Did Clint Eastwood in Dirty Harry cause gun crime? Did Marilyn Manson cause the Columbine shooting? Does gangster rap make one join a gang? To every one of these questions, the answer is no, including gaming. It's easy to scapegoat. That's what we all do. This has been used for generations and it's been played up. Let me know that I myself am at the age where I'm starting to criticize the youth and compare them to my time in my day and etc. But I stop myself because I try to remember that at every point in history, there's a scapegoat for the disconnected. The next clip argues that gaming doesn't show the horrors of war. Well, I don't think that it desensitizes people because in order for it to desensitize people, it would have to, in fact, reflect reality, which it does not. What these games do is it convinces young people that this is something that they want to do. They want to go be this action hero in this other country and that what they play in games actually does represent reality. Uh, if it showed you the reality, uh, it would show you uh, ripping families apart in the middle of the night. It showed people being tortured in detention facilities. It would show the civilian casualties, dead children, the real aftermath of war. It would show you uh, your best friend shooting himself in the middle of the night because he couldn't deal with the trauma. This is the reality uh, of military service. Is the argument that gaming is incapable of telling an anti-war narrative? That it only shows one glorious side of war? For this argument, I found a few Metal Gear Solid clips which do an accurate job in telling an anti-war narrative through its cutscenes. Not much context is needed, except for the first clip has a wounded soldier basically brought back from the dead, and he tells the main character that he's haunted by his war guilt and the other has a female rookie soldier become disenchanted by war. Tell me if these cutscenes show the horror of war. Fox, why? What do you want from me? I am a prisoner of death. Only you can free me. Fox, stay out of this. What about Naomi? She's hell-bent on taking revenge for you. Naomi? You're the only one who can stop her. No, I can't. Why? Because I'm the one who killed her parents. I was young then, and couldn't bring myself to kill her too. I felt so bad that I decided to take her with me. I raised her like she was my own blood to soothe my guilty conscience. Even now she thinks of me as her brother. But from the outside, we might have seemed like a happy brother and sister. Every time I looked at her, I saw her parents' eyes staring back at me. Tell her for me. Tell her that I was the one who did it. There you are! Damn. Shoot me, Snake. No, 
My gun. I can't reach it by myself. Don't move. I promised. I wouldn't slow you down. I... I... I, I can still help. I want to help you. Quiet down. Save your strength. I was a fool. I wanted to be a soldier. But war is ugly. There's nothing glamorous about it. From the clips you just saw, you see that gaming can have a powerful narrative that war does in fact tear families and people apart. This idea that gaming can't reflect reality is flawed in its framing. Does anyone want to be Grey Fox or Meryl? Only as much as people want to be Clint Eastwood. As Meryl said, war is ugly. There's nothing glamorous about it. Now onto the next clip. The overarching thing in all of these games is this, this aspect of this hyper-patriotism, of this over-glorification of military service, of combat. And what that's telling young people, uh, what it's telling people in this country, is that the wars that the U.S. is engaged in, uh, and that when we're sending our, our brothers and sisters in uniform abroad, that what they are doing is necessary, what they are doing is just, what they are doing is brave, and it's honorable. Um, but I think really, you know, one of the aspects of these video games um, that really, you know, is truly disgusting is, is that these are taking place, you know, games like Call of Duty that take place in the, the Mideast theater of war, um, where you're shooting these, you know, faceless, you know, demons and things like that, uh, you know, the dehumanization of the people abroad, is these are countries that today and actively are decimated and destroyed by the effects of the war. Uh, that's what's not shown in the video game. In Iraq, over 1.3 million people were killed. In Afghanistan, tens of thousands and more and more every day. So the game that is supposed to be uh, separate from reality are taking place in places that are completely devastated with the worst humanitarian crises, the worst catastroph catastrophes of this era. So you know, I don't think he meant to say all video games because he's incorrectly stating that all video games invoke hyper-patriotism. He also argues that video games dehumanize minorities and war-torn areas by making them faceless. This clip I'm about to show you is the death of Sniper Wolf, a character who grew up with war around her. I am a guard. I have always dreamed of a peaceful place like this. A guard? So that's why you're called Wolf. I was born on the battlefield. Raised on the battlefield. Gunfire, sirens, and screams. They were my lullabies. Hunted like dogs, day after day. Driven from our ragged shelters. That was my life. Each morning I'd wake up and find a few more of my family or friends dead beside me. I'd stare at the morning sun and pray to make it through the day. The governments of the world turned a blind eye to our misery. <sighs> Let's keep going with this dehumanization argument that the point had. You know what's a more likely contributor to a disconnection between reality and war? The news. While soldiers are fighting a battle in a foreign country, we get home at 6pm to watch the news. To show you the power of the news, here's a story, and it'll be in the description, about how people who watch Fox News are misinformed compared to people who don't even watch the news at all. Who's more dangerous when it comes to war? The older, potentially misinformed, and larger voting bloc who watches Fox News? Or the 18-year-old who just bought Call of Duty? I'll leave that question open, but here's one man's opinion on the danger of misinformation. And what does the USA Today incompetent loser say? USA safer, Bush says. That is a lie. They've done a terrible job. Every one of these editors in every major newspaper, in every major magazine, in every major television news organization, organization should be fired today. 43% of Americans believe that Saddam Hussein was personally involved with 9-11. That is the worst failure of the mainstream press I have ever seen. Ever seen. And why do you think now 58% of Americans are opposed to the Iraq war? Do you know what that number would be if 43% of them didn't think Saddam Hussein did 9-11? That number would be like 3%. God damn it, they failed us. 
And if you're not angry about that, Michael, and any of you out there, then you're goddamn wrong, because you should be angry. Young Turks. Now that you've seen all this, put your comments below. Do you think video games cause greater dehumanization than the media? I'm going to leave a very powerful cutscene here if you still doubt gaming's ability to tell a narrative. By the way, if you like the video, thumbs it up. You've been watching TYT Gaming, hosted by Brandon. TYT Nation, too strong. Snake, we're not tools of the government or anyone else. Fighting was the only thing 